Hey folks, Quillyteen here, and welcome to, well, let's mod the Kerbal Space Program. I'm making this video for two reasons. One, because the way I sort of record, upload, and publish the videos, there's usually a, a day or two difference between when I record and when you see the videos, which means that um, normally, if I want to make sure to have a video every day, um, I need to record an episode before the previous one goes online, therefore I'm not always up to date on the comments. So this is sort of filler there to make sure that I'm completely caught, caught up on all the comments and all the tips and advice. And by the way, you guys have been really awesome at giving, first of all, really friendly and nice advice without being spoilery. It's been epic, perfect, wonderful. I love the experimentation and figuring out things in the game, but it's also nice to, you know, be pointed out it's like, oh, you're asking about this. Well, you probably want to do that. It's like, oh, just wonderful. And then the other thing is a lot of people have suggested mods. Now, normally, um, I don't mod games too heavily. One, I find it a lot of work to sort of do and maintain, and an update comes out and everything breaks, and that's very frustrating. But also, because I make videos, I don't like to have my version of the game be substantially different from the vanilla version. Otherwise, people get confused, or it's not something they can necessarily relate to. Plus, then I'm answering questions about mods all day. However, oh, and, you know, just don't want to change the game experience too, too much. However, what I do like are any mods that just give us more information and or provide some sort of quality of life improvement. Um, for example, I've expressed a certain amount of frustration about some of the way that you go around picking up science throughout the game, um, and someone mentioned a very lovely mod called Science Alert. So we're going to be talking about those in a moment. First of all, you may have noticed there's a button over here. There's a sort of a thingy going on. Um, this is, well, first of all, Science Alert is the mod that was recommended. And then from there, that one says it works well with uh, what Blitz, Blitzy's Toolbar and also SatScan. Blitzy's Toolbar is simply this thing here um, where other mods can use this as a place to dock and put their buttons. Um, and then you can, you know, sort of drag this bad boy around and, and put it in different places and resize it if you want. And, uh, and that's, you know, that, that's cool and nifty and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'll just, you know what, I'll, I'll just leave it there for now. Um, so that's one, but we're going to go and talk about uh, a couple others, which I guess means we'll sort of need to build a spaceship. Well, actually, I should probably discuss the um, the SatScan mod, just because I'm not actually going to be able to use it right here. This is, a, this is a new career mode game that I just loaded up here just to, to demo things. The SatScan mod gives you... This is the one thing that sort of, sort of changes the game, but it was just way too cool to not use it. What allows us to do with, uh, with science, we can research these sort of radars that allow us to scan the surface of planets and moons and whatever as we're orbiting over them. And it will give us a surface scan. It'll actually create a map of the planet below us as we fly over it, including at higher levels of science with the fancier kind of radars, it will include a full color biome scan of the planet, which first of all, is super cool. Secondly, is actually very, very, very realistic. I mean, um, I can't remember, was it Apollo 8, the first mission that actually orbited the moon? I think it was 8. Could have been 7 or 9, but I think it was maybe 8. Anyway, orbited the moon like 10 times or something like that. One of the things they did is they took tons of pictures and video of the lunar surface so that when they eventually got around to landing on it at Apollo 11, they'd been able to pick out a, a proper spot based on that earlier um, that earlier, I, I don't know, this is altimetry here, I don't know, those, those surface scans, um, which is, makes perfect sense, and why not have that in a game here? Doubly so when you have the importance of the fact that you want to be able to land in different biomes and do different amounts of science. It makes great, it, it's very useful from a game point of view to be able to get a map of those biomes here so that you can plan your landings out a little bit better. So that's like the one thing that sort of alters gameplay a little bit that I've gone and done it, because I think you also get science out of this, um, I'm actually not sure about that. Again, I haven't played this with this yet because it needs some higher tech, so I'm building up to it. I'm very excited. Okay, um, let me go ahead and plop into, I guess, here. We're going to have to do a very, very basic initial construction um, because I have no science yet, but it is allow going to allow us to show off the science alert module. So I'm going to go ahead and drop in just a simple command pod, and right away we get another pop-up over here, the Kerbal Engineer Redux, which um, if you've installed this mod, Normally it won't be on, you'll have to click the button right over here, although we get some stats down here as well. Um, what this does is it just gives us more information, which is super useful. Now most of this could have been calculated on our own, but let's say I, I grab this module and I just throw on the one solid booster we've got. Right away we get information about this stage, first of all, if I, I, I will unlock the tech in a moment here to get multiple stages, but um, it will tell us our stats at this stage in terms of what the weight, uh, the cost of this uh, stage is, the weight of it. Um, this ISP, this is the oh, specific impulse. 
Is that what it means? And actually, some people in the comments were already telling me about this. And you can actually find out this information on um, on these modules here. It's perhaps less relevant, maybe, with the solid boosters and even more so with the liquid ones, because it effectively um, represents the efficiency of, it, of the engine um, based on its weight and, and how quickly it burns through fuel and also compares the atmospheric versus the vacuum. So, like, the thrust here is just the, the raw power, but there's also weight and different things in there, so... And this is the fuel efficiency. It actually is not a it's not a, a thrust to um, to weight ratio, which is what we have here. We could calculate it, of course. And you know, so thrust to weight is one thing. That's just how much pure force it's got. But the specific impulse, this ISP to weight, is perhaps even more important because I think that is what actually translates to delta V. Now, what's interesting is later on we'll get like little electric engines, right? Um, that are amazing. They have an unbelievably big ISP because they effectively have, I don't know, like quasi-unlimited fuel, but they have such tiny thrust that they could never lift off from the planet. They can't even lift themselves, let alone a payload. But once you do get in space where there's no gravity and the fact that they have, like, no thrust whatsoever, but they can run forever becomes really useful for um, going from planet to planet, especially with maybe unmanned satellites and that sort of thing. Um, so that's, first of all, thank you, uh, whoever. I think there was more than one, but so thank you all of you who pointed out this uh, specific impulse thing. This is incredibly useful to have. But then on top of that, this Kerbal Engineer Redux mod, which breaks these stats down, is incredibly good because now we can actually do proper rocket science. Mostly what I've been doing is experiments, right? It's like, is this enough power to go? Is this enough power to go? But now that I've got more numbers, which yes, I could have actually calculated most of this myself, figured out the delta to be. Um, but, you know, math is hard. Uh, let's bake cookies. Um, by having this, now it's like, okay, uh, based on the, the gravity of Kerbal and different things like this, I have, I know that, you know, because we've got this information, that I probably need about 4,500 meters per second of delta V to reach proper orbit. Right now, I know I'm like not overkilling, I'm not over undershooting, and more importantly, with this Kerbal Engineer Redux mod, as I can break it down by stage. So, for example, this, say, this stage here, I never want to use this part of it to reach orbit. I want to use everything below it. And if we've got, well, I'll have to, I'll have to science a bit to get some extra components so that we can break down into multiple stages. But um, then I'll know that, like, okay, I can, going all the way up to this certain stage, stage X, I'll have enough delta V to reach orbit. And then um, if I want to go to the moon, for example, I need somewhere around the vicinity of eight or 900 delta V to get from Kerbin orbit to lunar orbit, to moon orbit, and, and so on and so forth. And I think altogether, uh, especially if you land and take off again, et cetera, et cetera, you might need you know a total of X amount of delta V, but you need them broken up into appropriate little stages. So really, really quite handy, big fan of, um, of that info, for example. Um, and then, uh, what was the other thing? Oh, space alert. So I gotta show off space alert. So let me go ahead and just remove this. Because we're gonna do the thing that you do in the first the first run, where all you do is you stick a, a goo container on your side, and then uh, that's it. Then we'll go to a launch pad and do some science. You'll note there's two extra components over here. Kerbal Engineer Redux also gets used when in flight. So you can get some of this information. Let me go and stick on a... Um, this engineering system right over here, this chip here. Actually, this one looks way cooler. I think under the original Kerbal Engineer, they did somewhat different things. I think right now they do like exactly the same thing, even though there's a price difference. Whatever, this one looks awesome. So we're, we're gonna use that. Um, and uh, we'll launch. So because I have that, I can use the Kerbal Engineer mod information here. It means I get these HUD, things at the top here. I don't know if you can see it says apoapsis height, time to apoapsis, periapsis height, time to periapsis, current altitude, vertical speed, horizontal speed, and what biome I'm currently over, which is awesome. Although this biome's a little deceptive here because technically this would count as launch pad and over here it would count as Kerbal Space Program because it sort of overrides the true biome. But if I got far enough away from the Kerbal uh, Space Center, then you know over there I'd actually be on the shores. But it also gives me this. So I can turn off those HUDs, but then I can also Get some extra buttons here. I think I can hide that. There we go. What's the control bar? That's weird. They both do the same thing. But I could hide that and then... Huh. I don't know. How do I get rid of this part now? Oh. Maybe I just hit the mouse out. There we are. There we go. 
So then I can just choose whether to show things or not. And if I do that, ah, oh, it gets rid of all of it. Okay. So yeah, if you don't want that control bar and you just want to be able to turn things on here, it's fine. Or you can leave the control bar on there and then toggle it. So nice little useful thing. This information is great because one of the things that um, I didn't necessarily enjoy before was having to, to get this information, the apoapsis and periapsis, I'd have to go to the map. I'd have to very carefully mouse over the little tag to get the info. And then if I want to go back to this, in, this screen, here, the flight screen, where I got you know more of my actual flight information, I'd have to keep toggling back and forth. Um, and some people did point out that I can toggle that on to get a permanent glance of my current fuel information. Thank you, that is actually useful. But I'm gonna, I think, be much, much happier if I can simply get this information from here. And actually, I could even go and get it from inside of here as well. Um, some of these things here might be some extra mods, the raster plugin or something like that. Um, might need some extra stuff, but like it opens up the possibility of flying from inside the ship, which I like. Okay, so enough of that. The other thing I've got going on here. Um, oh, oh, oh. Uh, so I had to add this this engineering or the engineering chip um, component to be able to get these things on the screen and these buttons. Otherwise, they wouldn't be there. Just installing the mod and then launching, and you'd be like, well, where's all this stuff? If you don't have this or the chip, you won't get this info. Unless you have an engineer with you. Of course, I have Jebediah here, who's a pilot. If I were to swap him out for whatever the name of the, uh, the standard engineer is, then I would have all this without needing to include one of these components, which is a nice little touch. And I guess later on when you're doing the uh, three-person capsule, then um, you'll get that information built in, which is awfully damn handy. So um, in addition to the, uh, the ScanSat sort of info here that I talked about before, I've also got this um, science alert thingamabob. Um, which, interestingly enough, is not giving me a science alert right now. Why is that? I should definitely be able to get some science. Is it because I haven't technically launched yet? That's strange. Because this science alert, its whole job is to let me know when I'm somewhere where I can get new science. It was working a second ago. I just did a test, and I was very happy with it. Let me go ahead and get the, the first initial batch of science over here. I don't think I forgot anything. I'm going to keep that data. Uh, we'll do the EVA. We'll do that EVA. Right, that's the flight one. We'll go and store it. I'll drop down. Get another EVA report. Grab that. Um, reboard it. And then recover my vessel. I think that's all the science I've got. That was weird. Why wasn't that working? Tell you what, what we'll do is we'll we'll build a ship with some actual engines and stuff and see if that changes anything. So now we got the baseline science here, which means I can go here, I can unlock engineering, and I can unlock basic rocketry. And then we can go back here. And we'll be able to show the multiple stage thing as well, which is nice. Let's go and stick a parachute on top. Um, and underneath that, let's go and add, say, the science junior module. And then I'll do this thing where I just add Looks a little stupid, but I'll add a girder underneath it. Because the science module has a crash tolerance of 6 meters per second. This module here, this whole thing will be so heavy. Um, well, it's not that heavy, but it'll be heavy enough that the parachute will only slow us down to about 6.3 or 6.4 or something like that, which will cause this to smash um, when we land on the ground. But if we land on the girder, and it is a bit of a balancing act, but we'll be able to do it because we're mostly just going straight up and then straight down with the parachute. Um, then uh, we'll be able to land on that girder and not have anything shatter. And then let's go and put in a stack decoupler. And here I can show off, let's say I put in like a couple of booster stages here. We've got one and two. I mean, I'm not really going to use this. Although I suppose I could. If I do this, for example, you can see by stages. So the stage four, the bottommost stage, has got a thrust to weight ratio considerably less than the other one. It's the same engine, right? So it's got the same thrust, but this bit here has to push everything on top of it, so its thrust to weight ratio is quite a bit lower. They've got the same burn time, obviously, uh, but the total delta V that's going to be contributed will be much smaller. I'm actually not sure why this is like that. These two numbers are the same, but these ones are not. I'm not sure what that represents, actually, in that display. Um, Change the altitude, get some information that way, get the breakdown for all stages. Oh, wait. Is this the total? I think that's the total. This is this stage. This stage will contribute 574. This one will, will contribute 1149. If you total the two together, you get this. 
So after both these have burned, we'll have reached that delta V. Oh, that's actually very useful. Okay, that makes total sense. Total sense. Um, good. And then I think that's these uh, mass ratings is the same thing. The sort of total mass of the, of the vessel at this point is 7.420, but this stage here is contributing 3.050. Um, okay. I don't really need the two stages, though. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. Simple. Launch. Separate. Parachute down. Yeah, we'll use the solid rocket booster. Who cares? Um, we got the science. Let me go ahead and like throw an extra goo pod on there. Let me move this computer there. Let me take this goo pod off and then just turn on the symmetry. And I think if we do this, I don't know why we didn't get the science. It was working a second ago. I'm sure it worked on the launch pad as well. No experiments found. Is it because I haven't like reset my computer? Because that's possible. I didn't actually quit Kerbal Space Program between runs here. So I'm wondering if there's something like that going on. Everything should be on. Oh, what's interesting here too is by default, assuming this works, I'm not sure why it's not working now. It disabled? Alert. Oh, that's the threshold. No, we, just, we want the, this to always be on. Um, let me reload. Load the default profile. You can even have it stop warp. Like if you're doing a time warp, you can have it stop warping and filter it there. But so right by default, it should let me know if I haven't run an experiment at all. But you can also change it where it'll let you know if it's just, you know, not maxed out. That's all fine. It works with ScanSat, works with Blitzy. Will give me some specific numbers. I think it's because it still has the old run in memory. I'm almost certain of that. So let's say these EVA reports. Let me know if it's just not maxed at all. Crew report as well. If it's not maxed, let me know. Well, let's see what happens. Let's launch. I'm a little confused for you guys, but we'll do our best. Ooh, I don't have any fins. Let me go at a bit of an angle. Oh, there we go, right away. See, look at this. Material study and mystery, mystery goo is available. Yeah, we're mostly going to crash here because I don't have any fins. But I can click on that and it'll run this. And what I also like is I don't have to go and like, while we're flying here and everything's chaos, I'm trying to steer. And I, in here, I have to somehow right click on the goo. Listen, I can just click here. We're going to crash. Don't worry about it. And do that just saves me a, a button click, which is beautiful. Let's whip that out. I'm actually surprised it's not giving me the other goo canister over the ocean. Yeah, I don't know. I think because it definitely should be work. Um, flight over ocean. No, no, no. It's right. It's just atmospheric flight. Once we land, then it'll let me do it. Although, couldn't I get a crew observation over the coast too? Something is a little weird. Yeah, see, there's definitely experiments available here, um, and it was working great last time. I have to assume it's somehow confused because I didn't reload things. Because certainly we can get a crew report information here, and we can. And likewise, it'll also have a little button there for EVAs, which is good too. No target. Yeah, all right. I think it's because of that. It was, I, it was working great. Apparently, it's not 100% glitch-free. Oh. Flying over Kerbin's shores, that is okay. Yes, that's reasonable that we don't have that, actually. But if I disembark, it should really give me a pop-up here because we'll get some science. Hmm. Well, that is a damn shame. Same thing with the goo. I really wanted to show it off. Um, yeah, I can't externally control it. I should have done it while I was still on the ship. And I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get back on. Nope. Almost. Anyway, um, I think that's all the mods I want to show off. Hold on, let me load up my list over here. Um, the Oh, I have Crowdsource Science, which I actually installed a while ago. It just gives me more messages from this, the science experiments, which is fun. The toolbar, the Kerbal Engineer, the ScanSat, uh, which I can't show off because I don't have the science, but it looks awesome if you just like Google that one. It's Kerbal ScanSat. The pictures and animations look amazing. The science alert, which is maybe not working. Again, it, I'm wondering if it's because I didn't properly reload it. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Um, it definitely worked great on my test run. Um, and it is, like, the most useful mod I've ever found, ever. Um, it could be... There could be some weirdness because what I did change since last time is maybe some of these... Well, that shouldn't be a thing. That doesn't matter. Although, I do always want it to cancel the warp if it runs into an experiment. Please. Well, let's recover this. 
And then we have to recover the one that's actually in the ocean. That just recovered Jebediah. Sorry, I want to see if we can get it to... Uh... There it is. Recover. Does this give me enough science for the uh, the gimbal? We got some alerts and things going on, which is good too. Um, right here. Yeah. Boom. Good stuff. Um, and then I don't know if we've got enough. I guess we've got enough for a little bit more survivability. Not that I need it right now. Although, it does open up some more options. <sighs> yeah, why would it be like that? Let me do another quick little run here, now that I've got access to the gimbal engine. Um, get rid of that. Bigger fuel tanks. Here, we'll we'll uh, double up on them. The gimbling engine, which means... Oops. We'll have a lot more stability. And since we're all entirely doing atmospheric flights, we should probably throw in some fins at the same time. At that. Should be all that we need. Unless there's some conflict between mods. Of course, that's always a possibility, too. <clears throat> oh, hey, look at this. Right away, material study. Okay, so there was just something weird about the last uh, the last launch. Because I was going to say, we never did a material study on the launch pad. So now it's letting me know. Excellent. Okay, and you know what? Let's recover this one. And then just immediately relaunch. And let's see if it keeps working the way I want. Same thing. No need to change anything. I guess I could have gone to the launch pad again. Saved one load screen. Mm -hmm. All right. Max throttle. SAS turn on. Launch. And... I'm going to get to about halfway. Oh, see, already more science. Crew report from the shores. Thank you very much. Let's go ahead and do that. About 45 degrees. And we should be able to land in the grasslands. In fact, I'll just do one of those at that point, and we'll definitely still be able to reach. Boom. One of those. Grasslands. It shows me the biome name. Right. Okay. It can't... If I had a transmitter unit, and I should have got, grabbed one, I would have been able to transmit my shore report, and now I would be able to do a um, flying over grasslands report. So a bit of lack of efficiency there. Um, no, keep that data. Let's fast forward slightly. And stop right before we hit the surface. Actually... Yeah, we still have time. There we go. Fully deployed. Parachute. Speed is fine. But you can see what I was saying. Like, our speed is a little over 6 meters per second, which means the material module would have exploded. As soon as we land... There we go. No, oh, we're toppled over. Oh, my God. That's, that's We're fine. But wow. And there we go. So we can get the material study. I love it. Love it. Don't know why it didn't work last time. But everything is working well with it this time. And what I like, so it'll do the EVA report. If I do this, it'll auto-EVA Jeb for me. Now, normally it would do an EVA report at this point, but I actually... Oh, I can get science. Okay. Store experiments. It does repop this this EVA report, even though I actually already have it. But more importantly, if I go down... I guess it's because, from his point of view, I can still start an EVA and do that. But there we go. Now we stored that. And we're good to go. Oh, can I get back on? I just missed it. Uh, grab. Board. Now, this... What does this have? No, review. So this has the Grasslands report. Now, I know that if I do another Grasslands report, I can still get some. So if I go and I change this... And if we get the materials report, or not Mertura, the, the goo. Materials, multispectral, mystery goo. And I say, let me know if it's just not maxed. Uh, maybe maybe because it's, it's not there yet. Because I should be able to technically get a little bit more science out of this. All right. 
Anyway, that, that is it as this look. If you do have any more recommendations for mods, either for me or for other players, right? Even if it might not be a mod that I want because of the sort of rules I set for myself, you le still leave it in the comments. That way other people who are watching this video can look at the comments and maybe find out about some more excellent, excellent mods. There are many of them for the Kerbal Space Program. It's, I think, one of the big reasons that the game has been so successful. Very much like something like Minecraft, for example, right? It's, it's the modding community that really keep it fresh and keep expanding it and uh, do awesome things. But I'm really excited about using these mods in the actual career mode. Looking forward to it very much and uh thank you very much for watching again thank you everyone for the uh, the really kind comments and you know again uh being nice but also being non-spoilery while still giving some good tips you guys have struck a really 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 good balance really appreciate that appreciate all the likes and uh as always if you haven't done it already make sure to subscribe because uh i plan on doing quite a few of these see you next time folks Bye bye